In today's video, we're going to try and find the best performing primer for 3.8 Winchester using Hodgkin's Varget. Welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. When it comes to today's topic, there is certainly no shortage of opinions when it comes to the best loads for 3.8 Winchester. One powder that gets no shortage of attention is Hodgkin Varget. Varget has a reputation for not only good groups, but also low standard deviations in velocity. Both are certainly what we're hoping to achieve, so it's no shock that's why we're discussing it here today. When it comes to using Hodgkin Varget, I'd hate to call it a problem, but getting lower SDs have kind of eluded me when it comes to using this powder. Not just in 30-06 Springfield, but a couple others as well. I've really not had any issues getting some pretty reasonable groups with it. However, lower SDs has really been something that I have struggled with, at least when it comes to Varget. In other calibers such as 6.5 Creedmoor, I've done some testing and research for powders like H4350, and I've actually switched primers and been able to achieve lower standard deviations by doing so. So starting out in 3 at Winchester, I thought we would take some of our brand new Lapua brass, get it fire formed, and actually do some primer testing right out of the gate to see if we can get a head start on finding a better primer combination for Hodgkin Varget. During today's video, we're going to disappoint everyone that doesn't like the incremental load development testing because that's what we're going to be using to run our tests. We're going to be running five tests today, 10 rounds each, testing five different primers. The five primers you see on the table going right to left is the Remington 9.5M, the Remington 9.5 Normal, the S&B, the Winchester Large Rifle Magnum, and the Winchester Large Rifle Regular Primers. This is large rifle primer brass, so obviously large rifle primers is what we're testing. When testing Varget and other loads, I really haven't used any of these primer combinations. So I thought we would change that today, get a head start, find out, look at if switching the primer maybe gets us some better performance and starts us over in the right direction. Before we get into any of the load details for today, let me make myself clear. Don't use this data. Don't. The max charge for today's load is actually generated in quick load and we're going to achieve velocities over what it predicted. The projectile we're going to be using is these 150 grain soft points because I had quite a few of them and we're fire forming today. Groups really weren't what we were concerned with, simply just getting the performance of consistent ignition with Varget. We're using a Hornady projectile. If we were going with Hornady load data, we're actually starting over max. Never something I would recommend. The caveat to this is Hornady's actual recommended cartridge overall length is 2.735 inches. And our cartridge overall length that we're actually going to be testing today is 2.860 inches, significantly longer. Because of that, that's going to allow us to put more powder in the case safely. However, we're still exceeding maximum at the end of our testing. Hornady's max for this combination is actually 44.9 grains. We're going to be starting off at 46.6. Like I said, don't use this data. Without actually getting too deep, when looking at the Sierra data, the actual max for Sierra is actually 47.8 grains for their 150 grain projectile. And that is again for a slightly shorter overall length. For today's testing, we're moving that out. We're actually going to be about 35 thousandths off the lands at our 2.860 inch measurement. And so we've used quick load to not only make some adjustments for pressure, but as well as the expected velocity. But again, we're going to achieve velocities higher than its prediction. These quick load calculations were actually based on a cartridge overall length of 2.870 inches, but 10,000 shouldn't make as big of a difference as we're going to see. Let's just get into our load details. This is the first firing on our brand new Lapo Brass large rifle primer. Our projectile for today is a Hornady 150 grain soft point, part number 3031. The primers for today's test we mentioned before, Remington 9.5M, Remington 9.5, the S&B large rifle primer, Winchester Large Rifle Magnum Primer, and the Winchester Regular Large Rifle Primer. Our starting charge is 46.6 grains of Hodgkin Varget, stepping up in two tenths of a grain increments to 48.4 grains. Quick load is calculating our estimated velocity at 2802 feet per second, keeping our pressure in check supposedly at 59,603 PSI. The cartridge overall length is 2.860 inches. That gives us a CBTO of 2.270 inches. Our new brass was prepared exactly like I usually do new brass, simply just running it through an expander mandrel die and setting our neck tension at two thousandths. Our test temperature today was somewhere in the ballpark of 62 degrees Fahrenheit and our density altitude was somewhere around 805 feet. Going through these charts all at the same time will be a bit difficult. We'll get to that before the end of the video. But basically what we're really looking for in these charts is response. 
Our first primer that we're going to look at is a Remington 9.5M. Keep in mind that our estimated velocities from quick load today, we would have started at 2699 feet per second, so basically 2700, and going only up to 2800 feet per second, 2802 again was the calculation. Starting off at 46.6, we achieved 2792 feet per second with the Remington 9.5M at our max charge of 48.4 grains. We maxed out at 2890 feet per second. Keep in mind what we're really looking for is theoretically a plateau somewhere in this graph. However, what we're really looking for is at least some type of a consistent response. In the first five shots of this test, we have an extreme spread of over 50 feet per second. Certainly not anywhere we would want to try loading. No matter how many samples we pick there, we're just not going to find good data. Maybe if we we're going to load a little higher, we can see our performance even out a little bit at the top end, but certainly there's no guarantees that are there. Again, keep in mind, we're going to put these all in the same shot eventually. Moving on to the Remington 9.5. Sometimes looking at these charts seems a bit unusual. After staring at a few of these, I will say the Remington 9.5 actually is looking pretty interesting to me. Starting off at 46.6 grains, we can see 2759 feet per second was what we achieved, maxing out at 2879. With our first three charge weights, the extreme spread of those three rounds was only seven feet per second, so we had some pretty consistent performance. Moving up a little higher, we can see we hit that next node. We're somewhere in the ballpark of 28, 10 feet per second. Our extreme spread from 47.2 to 47.8 grains is only 18 feet per second. Again, wouldn't really want to be loading on those edges, but it looks like there might be some reasonable performance in there. Again, that's extreme spread, not standard deviation. But let's keep looking and see if we find anything better. To be fair, before I show you the next chart, I almost wanted to label these A, B, C, and D because I didn't think anyone was going to believe when I put on the next chart. This chart is the S and B primers. To me, this is a very interesting chart. Starting off at 46.6 grains, 2761 feet per second is what we achieve. As we move up in two tenths of grain increments at 48.4 grains, we max out at 2868 feet per second. But the very interesting thing for me is how even the velocity spread is between groups. We don't necessarily see a firm node unless we want to talk about the data at 47 and 47.2 grains. There's really literally only an extreme spread of two there. But again, the s and primer has such good consistent performance in this graph, I just don't think it should be ignored. Moving on to the Winchester Large Rifle Magnum Primer, we can see at 46.6 grains, we started off at 2786 feet per second, and at 48.4 grains, we max out at 2901 feet per second. Again, a pretty interesting graph. We see fairly consistent ignition. We don't see any drastic changes in velocities. Doesn't appear to be quite as consistent as the SMB primers. We do have the one velocity dip there at around 48 grains. We dropped to 2857 feet per second from 2864. The Winchester Large Rifle Magnum primers, interesting enough performance, probably should do some testing with them as well. Moving on to our last primer, Winchester Large Rifle primers. I certainly have gotten some feedback from the audience talking about using Winchester Large Rifle primers, especially in 308. A little bit of a rough start down there at the low end. At 46.6 grains, we start off at 2780, but immediately drop to 2760, back up to 2819, and then down to 2780. So at least in that beginning part, we really don't see consistent velocities. Our max charge of 48.4 grains, 2889 is where we maxed out. Interesting data to me for sure. We'll put all the primers on the same chart now, and you can stare at this and look at it a little bit. If I thought this was going to be actual usable data to move forward with, at 48 grains, it seems like almost all those really want to be in a really similar velocity range. You guys can pause the video and stare at the graph to your heart's content and read into what you like. Let's just walk the brass real quick, show you the pressure on the Remington 9.5M. Again, starting off at 2792 feet per second, going out to 2890. Our Remington 9.5 primer starting at 2759 feet per second, maxing out at 2879 feet per second. The S&B starting out at 2761 feet per second, maxing out at 2868 feet per second. The Winchester Large Rifle Magnum starting at 2786, moving to 2901. And last but not least, the Winchester Regular Large Rifle Primer, 2781 is our starting point, maxing out at 2889 feet per second. As far as pressure signs on the brass, really not significant. Uh, if you guys see the little stripe that's left by the ejector there, I can put a brand new piece of brass in there, open and close it, and that mark's going to be left on there. So it really has nothing to do with the heat of the loads. If you look at the primers on there, you can see we've got just a touch of primer cratering on some of the higher loads. Really nothing over what we've seen with some of our factory ammo. We do get just a little bit of cratering with this rifle. 
If you're interested in some of the other primer testing that I've done with various other powders, I'll put a link to the playlist so you can go check those out. I think through our testing today, we've achieved what we needed to do. We fire formed our brass. We're gonna do some serious load development now. The cases should be more consistent than they were right out of the gate. And we're probably gonna pick a primer that we wouldn't ordinarily have picked. If you think I missed something in today's video, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. Here's some other videos that YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.